back. We are a tribe called Dylan. It's actually a tribe called Dylan podcast. Welcome back. We hope you had a great week. Uh, I had a good week, tired week. What was your week My like? My week was great. Your My week was busy, hectic, just like yours. Mm -hmm. Yep. I'm happy to be here to be taping. That's the My, name of the game. place. Uh, did you guys watch any good shows? Uh, I watched a few good ones. I started watching this show called Working Moms. It's Ooh, actually really funny. I watched an episode with you. Yeah, it's really funny. It's actually um, written and produced pretty much by one of the main characters on the show. I think her name is Catherine Reitman. It's based in Toronto. And her and her husband play pretty much the same character in real life that they do on the show. So it's pretty cool. Canadian yeah. show. Yeah, Canadian show. Ooh. I think it's like the only show CBC has ever produced that's good. That's true. <laughs> Yeah. Nice. Okay, what's it about though? About working moms. <laughs> For real? The the title yeah. gave it all, gave it yeah. away, Ange. Working okay. moms. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. I watched an episode with you. It's actually pretty funny. Yeah, it was good. Okay, so you watched a little bit of TV. What about mm -hmm. you? Um, I started reading uh, Matthew Perry's book, his autobiography. It's it's essentially his his uh, battle with addiction. Wow, heavy, heavy, heavy book. He's extremely honest. Um, just lays it all out there, and you just. He walks you through seasons of friends, which was kind of sad because it was one of my favorite shows in the nineties. Mm. And now I'm realizing he was struggling through the, the entire season, you know, uh, he was always like, I think drunk, he, like, no, not, not drunk, no, he not taping. Drunk no, he, he, would, he, drink, he okay. would drink before or after, but he was never, he would show up professional, but he was Good. struggling. And then he says like every season of the weight loss, he would know, Oh, that's the drinking season. That's mm. the drug season. So yeah, oh, really, really. Remember, um, that, um, remember that one season when he got, when he gained a lot of weight. That was like, a drinking season. He said when he started drinking a lot of beer, he'd gain oh, weight. Oh. When he was on drugs, he'd be really skinny. Mm. Yeah, oh. really hard story for him. Yeah. Poor guy. I liked all the care. I liked that show, and I really liked uh, Chandler Bing. That was his name, yep. right? Chandler Bing. Yeah. Yep. Oh, he's a fellow Canadian. Is he? Yep. From where? Is born, raised in Ontario. Uh, no. Yeah. Way. They, apparently, he beat up Justin Trudeau. Yeah, when he was no. Him and yeah. Justin Trudeau went to school together. Yep. Yeah. No way. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, then, his and, mom and, and then Trudeau his, challenged Trudeau's him back mom. on Twitter and he's like, yeah, you have an army behind you now. I'm good. Oh, was this <laughs> when like he became prime minister? He challenged yeah. him? Yeah. No yeah. way. But they it's followed when they were younger because I think his yeah. mom and Trudeau's yeah. mom uh, worked together. together. Yeah. So it means they probably went to some bougie private school then. Yep. Yep. Mm. Yeah. So yeah, that was my um, highlight of the week. It's an interesting book. Um, I think I'm going to, did you, did you get a physical copy of the book or one of your Kindle things? Kindle. Oh, see, I like the physical copy. Of yeah, I read way too many books. <laughs> Buying hard copy books. I'm still I have expensive a subscription. Too. Yeah, I have a subscription. I'm still, I'm on, I have made it to page 12 of the Bhagavad Gita now. Oh, hi. Nice. Yeah. Good for you. God, that's hard. The last one finally it's to like, join. You're pretty much on like half a page a day. Well, right now. I, I think a couple was it when on one of the episodes we talked about what are you reading? And I was in between inner engineering. But you were really reading Bhagavad either? Gita. No, I was reading both. No, you said you were in between the power of now yeah, and, and energy. Cartel. Uh, uh, three so books. Not really reading. Okay. Three, no, I have three books. You might as well go. just be reading what I'm reading. Where's Waldo? Because that's what you're doing. You're pretty much just looking at the paper and then closing the book. <laughs> so I was in between three, and finally I was like, no, Ange, you got to pick one. Pick one of these ones. So I, and this is not a very good, this is not a very good thing, but I went to the end of the Bhagavad Gita. I'm like, oh, it's like 240, 250. I'm like, okay, so if I read 10 pages, uh, you know, every day in 25 days, I can accomplish and finish reading this book. Yeah, so that was a mindset that good. I used because it's very intense. Yeah, you very know intense. Oh, yeah. It's deep. And so oh, now yeah. I'm finally getting every page is like, what? Yeah. yeah. I was like, what? Well, I, yeah. I find what works for me is that once you start a book, you have to finish it. You yep. can't start with mm -hmm. and do multiple books nope. yeah. at the same Not time. Not for something it's like the Bhagavad yeah, Gita. That's just, a very deep It'll take you forever and you'll yeah. also get kind of lost in the mix yeah. if you're doing only like 10, yeah. 15 pages a day. Yeah. So I think I'm at the at the part where now they're starting to talk about, I think, like kindness, love for all. Yeah. Uh, look at yourself from the other person's perspective. Self-awareness. Um, don't do any ill will. And, you know, when someone's hating on you. Um, just put yourself in their shoes. It's easier said than done, right? But I understand what they mean from a spiritual perspective. So that's kind of you know interesting to me. Don't lead with the ego, lead with love. Yep. Right. And there's like a whole, I think, chapter on like your thoughts, right? Like mm -hmm. the intentions you set with your thoughts and, and how like, powerful those are. Mm -hmm. And really like you're drinking the poison, hoping that the other person yeah. dies. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like yeah. good versus evil. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. I, so I haven't really watched. about that jam now. You gotta be really careful mm -hmm. what yeah. you say, man. I what used to think? read a lot of books when I was uh, younger, uh, and I think just life and and work, and you just get bogged. I'm down the things. opposite, so I was out more like partying and doing you stuff. Were, like, yeah. yeah, and then I got older. And I was like, you know, I'm I'm good with all that now, and mm -hmm. I started reading more now that I've gotten older, and mm -hmm. I think I got a little wiser. Yeah, and <laughs> is, 
isn't it nice when there's a really good book, you escape into that, yeah. right? Yeah. Well, that's how, like, his autobiography was like me escaping into it, like him walking me through his relationships and the season of Friends, and, like what he thought fame was going to do for him and didn't do any of the things that, like, he spent over $7 million on therapy and rehab. And like the amount of drugs he was on at moments of his life, he you know, he had a near death experience and nearly died and was like in coma for two weeks. Seven million Jeez. bucks. Yeah. Oh, but yeah. he thinks that summer probably went back from when he was Childhood. a baby. He was oh a yeah. Child. He walks you through everything. Yeah. Like he really takes accountability and tells you everything about like what happened to him from the time he was born to the time he was like five years old, the divorce, separation, oh. all of that that he feels plays a role. And I I can totally agree with mm. all that from your childhood definitely plays a key. And he said he asked God to just make him famous. He didn't ask for anything yeah. else. That's all he asked yeah. for. He asked yeah. yeah, he's like, I yeah. just want to be famous. Yeah. That's it. But he didn't ask and for any like other And within like a things. month, he was famous. You know what? Um, one thing that I've learned with um, affirmations and setting intentions is you got to be specific. Right? Mm-hmm. You got to be so Seriously. specific. You got to like write down to the T exactly what you want. Because if you just mm-hmm. get, give God a half ass yep. list. He will he, give you exactly that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. He's going to give you a half done that. person. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> you will manifest exactly yeah. what yeah. you put and then you, And yeah. then you're going to spend your time trying to tweak that person. And we all know you can't change anybody. You cannot change nobody. Yeah. yeah. Did uh, mm-hmm. did um, Matthew Perry ever do ayahuasca? No, he never went down. The, I don't think he ever went down the uh, psychedelic. I'm, again, I'm only like maybe halfway into the book, mm-hmm. but he doesn't talk anything about psychedelics, but he did um, AA and he really does feel like having that spiritual component is what's mm-hmm. helping him stay sober mm-hmm. is like seeking God and finding in that. Yeah. Now he's found his true purpose. Like he was saying, I don't want to leave the world knowing just being known for Chandler and being on friends. I have a bigger purpose. And now he knows is to help people uh, get sober and stay sober. That's awesome. Yeah. It's amazing. It's amazing that when, when people go down that path of when they're struggling with addiction and whatnot, the one common denominator between everyone is always like we found yes. God or we found our form of yes. God or higher power. Yes. That's what helps keep them going. You might get out of it using other methods, but to keep you sober and keep you going is generally, yeah, you got to believe in a higher power yeah. and believe in like something that's stronger than your own will. Agreed. Agreed. Yeah. So that's great mm-hmm. that he's looking that he's finding spirituality. I think s- at some point in life, we all get to that point where if you don't find God, God's going to come yeah. find you. Mm-hmm. Right? Yeah, One totally. Yeah. yeah, God's going to be like, come knocking on your door. Yeah. Like, yo, we got to talk. Mm-hmm. I feel like that happened to me. Like I took breaks from God for like periods of my life mm-hmm. and it was always like knocking back. And then at the end, I was like, I'm going to find my way. And I was like, you yeah. sure did. Mm-hmm. Yeah. If yeah. you try to avoid it, it'll come back and slap you like Will Smith. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Um, it's funny because it's not funny, but I mean, when you think about 7 million bucks, we're like, who's got 7 million bucks, but to spend that kind of money trying to figure out what your What's demons, with me? Yeah, yeah. And your addiction, but yeah. isn't ayahuasca where they say it's like 10 years of therapy into, it one, really into one, one or two 100%. sessions? 100%. I can totally say because I've done it. Mm-hmm. It felt like 10 years of shit mm-hmm. comes up and you've got to deal with all of it in two days. And then you come back and obviously you still mm-hmm. process through the whole thing. And that's why I think the keys, if you don't keep doing the work and processing Mm -hmm. it was just a waste of your time and energy but if you come back and Mm -hmm. continuously do the work you get a lot from that that one powerful weekend session holy moly and it continues to help you as long as you try to keep working on yourself then it continues because you'll have those thoughts like i remember when i had to go through that experience or i remember this day i still go back and listen to the the soundtrack of when the the shaman was yeah. playing throughout the experience and sometimes I'll sit there and you'll put the headphones on where you actually feel the bass and whatnot yeah. and you it takes you back into it totally that, takes you back that same yeah. experience that you were having. Yeah. So, how yeah. is it um but how like where did where did that term come up that it's like ten years of therapy and like two sessions? Like how is it though? How that's can like how can you just say that that's yeah, I did you guys well, feel like that? Yeah I felt but because I was really feeling a lot of my own childhood abandonment issues having my anxiety. And I had set that intention of like, let me work through this and find out what's really going on. Because I didn't, I wasn't able to tap into a lot of my own childhood memories. I blocked a lot of it out. So she shows, and she called, we call her grandma Ayahuasca. She shows you all of it. Like everything is surfacing. You're reliving your childhood. You're standing. Right. Like when I was pushed down the stairs, I went back to that scene where I'm standing at the top of the stairs. And now I can see someone pushing me down the stairs. Like so I it- relived everything that was dark and everything that was good as well. All the beautiful mm-hmm. things that happened in my childhood. I was able to relive that as well. Yeah, those emotions come up. So you're yeah. feeling you have to sit with them, deal with it. And you have nowhere to go. Yeah, exactly. It's, yeah. it's, a, it's, it's, it's really intense. Yeah. And also what, as far as that, when you're around, surrounded by another 20, 25 people or so, them dealing with their emotions and their experiences of what's happening to them. That's also tough too, because 
just like we're, they say we're all like a spirit or energy, all their energy and their spirit is yep. in the same room and you're feeling all these things mm. coming at you. And yeah, yeah it's, 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 and they say, when they say it's at 10 years of therapy, it's because of how much stuff you release out of your body. Yeah. Like you, you'll sit there and um, you actually have to give you purge. buckets because they know yeah. you're going to purge. And when you purge, it's like Bizarre. the weirdest sounds you're making really? and like just black stuff is coming out black of you. Black stuff is coming out of you. Yeah, because well, the drink you, you take, take you don't really drink. eat anything, oh. right? You don't really eat anything. Yeah, you don't drinking. eat fast. Yeah. Whatnot, so the drink just, is like a black You feel stuff? energies coming out of yeah. you. And what, how do you feel the next day is you do, you, you're scared lighter. of what you experience, but you feel lighter. Yeah. And you do walk out of the place for months after feeling like you just release a bunch of like, yeah. like tension out of your, you You yeah. feel like you've, you've gotten something out of it. Like it felt like therapy because that's what therapy does to you right help you get over your emotions mm-hmm. get to work through them and then you release them cry it out puke it out or whatever yeah. you yeah. have to do and if you think about therapy is really just like helping you rewrite that story you tell yourself that narrative mm-hmm. and so that's what ayahuasca does because it does is she brings you the, the stories to you without the ego so you're no longer but you have no contact with that anger, resentment, jealousy, envy. Mm-hmm. Like those emotions are like blocked. You can't even mm-hmm. access that. That's so the only cool. thing you can access is love, compassion, mm-hmm. kindness, joy, all that. So when you see if somebody's wronged you, she shows you what they're thinking. Like what happened with them? You're like, oh, okay. So like, you know, and I mean, first, I'm sure it's harder for people who've had really serious things that have happened in their life. But like, for me, it was enough for me to like forgive some people mm-hmm. who wronged me in my childhood or in my adulthood. Yeah. Like, to really understand and have compassion. Like they are the way they are because of what happened to mm-hmm. them. So how do you, um, well, how are these visuals? Um, how do the visuals play out in your mind when you're under the influence of the psych? It's a psychedelic, yep. right? Plant, yep. plant, plant, plant medicine. Yep. So are they flashbacks of images? Is it the actual yep. image or is it like you have to piece it together? Like what is mama? Iowa? Is it mama ayahuasca or grandma? Or grandma, ayahuasca. grandma. Mother ayahuasca. Mother, yeah. Okay. Whatever you want to call so it. how like, yeah, it's a motherly you, feeling. Like, you know how motherly mm-hmm. loves. Yeah. yeah. It's that kind of a protection feeling that oh. you have. Um, you relive some of it because essentially what it's doing, it's unlocking your subconscious. So you're going back into, because you know, people like think we forgot stuff that happened. Like, mm-hmm. like you don't forget mm-hmm. anything. And there's a really great book and I don't forgot the um, author's name because it's long, but it's called the body keep score, which I highly recommend the viewers mm-hmm. to read that book. It's sensational. Um, and it really tells you that everything stores in your physical yeah. body. Mm-hmm. Like you don't leave. It doesn't leave just because you think it's like, oh, I don't think about it anymore. No, like the it's, it's here. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And so you have to kind of work through that. And she brings up some of those stored memories that you didn't even know. Like I was saying to mom, like after you had me when I was born, I was able to see at the hospital, like dad holding me. And then I was like, there was an, another woman holding me right after. And I was like, mom, did you go to like our aunt's house? She was like, yeah. I was like, yeah, I saw her holding me. She was the very first person who held no, me. Wait, when you I was, didn't know this no, before. I didn't know anything. I was doing nothing. Ayahuasca. Yeah. I saw what? her physically holding me. And I was like, again, it's in my mind. So I'm mapping the pieces like, yeah, that's, oh, it's her. Mm-hmm. And seeing like so many people had come to see me because I was born on Christmas day. Oh yeah. Yeah. So all those things, when I came back and told mom, she's like, yeah, all that happened. So it, oh. it really, and then you tap into like your loved ones, right? Like I really tapped in, was able to connect with Baba on such a deep level. Yeah. It was so beautiful to be able to have his blessings and have him, you know, kind of say to me, you're on the right path, mm-hmm. whatever you're taking in life, you're on the right path. Keep moving forward. Don't mm-hmm. look back, you know, forgive yourself. You know, don't beat yourself up. Don't beat right? yourself up. You learn from your mistakes and make sure you, when you make them, you, you, mm-hmm. you recognize and then you grow from them. Yeah. I like to say, um, I call this thing, like, I like to think that our brains are hardwired like a computer. Like, you know how they say like, your memory, of like, like everything is in it a is hard totally, drive, it's stored somewhere. Yep. You know when you lose a file in the computer? Mm-hmm. But there's a way to retrieve yeah, that file yeah, exactly. always yeah. because it's stored in the RAM somewhere, in right? Cache somewhere. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So that's how I feel that our mind and our brains are like that. That there's some things that we block up. You know how people say, "I don't remember anything from this age to this age." I'm like, no, it's because you're choosing not to yes. remember that. Subconsciously, it's tapped under some layer yep. of trauma mm-hmm. or something, but it's yep. buried there. And so that's what I think when you do these types of psychedelics or you do therapy or counseling, you start keep you start removing the layers and layer and layer after and to the point where you're like, oh, that's where it was. Subconsciously it's stored somewhere. So, so, we're, we're, so we're like, I feel like, like therapies, at least for me, it just never was able to dig deep enough. Like I would mm-hmm. try to do the work. I was just never able to like unpack enough where with ayahuasca, I felt like I was like, zoom, like I went down 10 like levels. Like someone pulled your yeah. pants down? Yeah, pants down? yeah, exactly. <laughs> like somebody pants zoom. you. <laughs> and I was able to just go down to a layer of that onion that was yeah. so raw, mm-hmm. like that really inside layer and be like, oh, wow. And then you come back and it starts to kind of close back up again, but you're never the same. You're never mm-hmm. like, 
uh, like your consciousness, like it would say it's here and it mm-hmm. expands to here. You come back, you're never that same. You're just always a little bit more self-aware. Yeah, exactly. You're a little bit more. So I see why I can see why people probably do multiple of these if they need to yeah. work through stuff. Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah. No, I agree. And, and I feel like therapy only does a, like the top layer surface and what it layer. does, it takes off the surface layer. And then after a few months of living life, it, it gathers back up again. Yeah. And then mm-hmm. you find that you're all you're doing is just scraping off the top layer, but it keeps filling yeah. back up. So when you go do ayahuasca, it's, it goes deep and I feel like it literally like, yeah, opens you up and removes a lot of the, mm. the, the nonsense that you needed to get the work through. Yeah. And then just, you're like, okay, I'm, I can, we can start filling it back up again with yeah. life, but you have a lot more room for it to mm. be filling up before you reach that I point. Think- of- and for you, yeah. like, I know we're, we're going to try to, we're trying to convince you to go <laughs> down this journey. To convince, I, and I'm I scared. Think, yeah. And I think, I don't think. It is scary. I, yeah, it is you scary. Should oh, be scared. No, right. And <laughs> I see now I definitely don't you want, should be scared. want to do it. Well, and this is why I think for you, your very first one would probably need to be like psilocybin, which is magic mushrooms mm-hmm. um, or MDMA or something of that sort with a other shaman or a counselor. Because my very first time I did psilocybin mm-hmm. uh, and I had just, you know, blindfolded, I downloaded the playlist from Spotify. Mind you, I had a nurse in my house. So I wasn't like, you know, in an unsafe environment. That was the first time I was five hours of love. Like I'd never in my life as a human experienced that kind of love. And I've been in love, like I've mm-hmm. been in relationships, but this level of love was so deep. And it was like, wait, I can create all of this. Mm-hmm. I'm able to tap into parts of myself and be this level of love like mm-hmm. i literally spent five hours crying like crying for five I hours i've never smoked, experienced that kind of love i haven't even smoked a joint ever yeah, I you're missing a cigarette. Out. <laughs> and now i'm gonna like boom fast forward to like mdma well, that's what, um, yeah, that's what and like, you're well, surrounded by like the best see, the and that's what will smith um said he had never done drugs any kind mm-hmm. of thing and he did 14 episodes of uh ayahuasca yeah and i just feel like just digging real yeah. <laughs> <laughs> i feel like growing up because i was the eldest mom and dad instilled so much fear in me yes. that i was scared to try anything i'm like i'm gonna get in trouble i'm gonna get like the beat so i just never did and then there's you two here trailblazers here that yep. just paved the way for well i was just like you know scared and i played it yeah. so safe my whole life and then i was like mm-hmm. is this really serving me but i think me i reached a point in my life where i needed something to dig deep to get something through, bigger yeah, something bigger than what i was trying to do with therapy and the way i was handling things it was not working so yeah i needed to go deeper and i felt like i've done the magic mushrooms but it didn't work for me maybe i wasn't in the right setting but i have tried it a few times after that it's just something about it doesn't work for me mm-hmm. like everybody with the experience they get I don't get that. I get that feeling of I get nauseous and I'm not enjoying this and I'm like, I'm feeling weak and it's not a good week where I'm like releasing. I'm just like, this is really weird. And I've taken the right amount. I've tried doing uh, micro dosing. It didn't work for me. And when I did the ayahuasca, I was like, this is what I needed. And but the feeling I got was like, I'm good for a few years. Like, I don't need to come and see you again for a few years because I think it gave me um, it gave me the vision and the tools like to release a lot of the stuff in my body and in my mind but it also taught me to say now we, i put you down a path of you see what your path is supposed to be go work that path yeah, yeah. Now go put the work in and you will start seeing where you need to go it just showed me that where i needed to go agreed and i was oh. say she shows you two paths like if you choose the path you're currently on yeah um this is what your life can look like but if you change your 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 trajectory and start going for things that make you uncomfortable yeah. things things that you need a lot more courage things that are going to be better for humanity whatnot you go down this path and she will guide you and and help you down that path versus if you choose a path without you know essentially god yeah, yeah. you know what's funny rose because i'm i'm watching you right now and i'm listening to you most of the time uh, you're like mute like a mouse on her episodes have you noticed <laughs> like stage like, right yeah, and she's just like hi hello and you are so bold and and I, what I, comes I, out what yeah. you're projecting like mm-hmm. you're just so like it's it changed my life yeah and i'm so you're so happy passionate about it. that i did it and i just if anybody viewers if you're stuck and you just don't i'm not encouraging um psychedelics but what i'm saying is just think of that avenue if you're in a place in your life where you just felt like you're stuck and you're in a dark place and you just don't know how to get out of it there and counseling is not working there are other avenues that you can do um please definitely make sure you talk to your counselor or talk to uh someone who's medical licensed professional, medical professional yeah. and get the guidance but for me uh, i mean it's been a year now yeah it's almost a year now and i just like i have friends now that i've had in the past I'm like i wish you knew me before ayahuasca because you know you guys have seen the change mm-hmm. in me people who, people who know me i've seen but I'm, I feel like I just have so much more love and compassion yeah. in my heart for 
everybody. And I needed that. I needed to remind myself that everyone has a struggle. Everyone's going through something in their life. It's not my place to judge. It's my place to just either hold space, have compassion or not have them in my life. If it's not serving, yeah. you. you know, yeah. I can wish them well and move, let yeah. them be on their yeah. path. Send them love and light. Yeah. And that's all we can do I, because yeah. everyone's meant to take their own path and they have to figure out themselves. Like, like say like we, you can't change me. I can't change yep. you. We can only change ourselves. No. Yeah. And when, when people say that thing, remember that joke I made about Steve Harvey, which I'll play, but you know, when you're giving that power to someone else to change me, to make me your project, you're just setting yourself up to fail. And I can say it because I've done it in my life. First, before I was always looking for a project or I was someone's project and you don't change for anyone else. No one changed for me and I didn't change for them. You only mm-hmm. change when you're sick and tired of your own bullshit. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So a uh, message to ladies, like a lot of women are always like picking men. Yeah. And like, and we think oh, we I'll save them. them or I'll change them. You're not going to save them. Yeah. You're not going to change them. You will only change when he's ready to change. So you either accept them as they are yeah. or you let them go. But please do yourself a favor. <laughs> I'm telling you from my personal experience, you can't change anybody. We've all been there, right? Where you yeah. think you can help that person yeah. change them, tweak yeah. them. They got to want to change I'm always for like, themselves. my love will save you. My yeah, love yeah. will, no, no. My love has finally that. saved me. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and I know both of you said that with counseling. I think counseling does have a place for yep. some people. Yep. I know I've done counseling in the past, but here's yep. what I found with counseling. Is counseling, uh, of course, is surface, but counseling is you tell the counselor what you want to tell the counselor. Yeah. You're tapping in straight up consciously. Yeah. Nothing about unconscious level here, right? Yeah. The dialogue is straight up. I'm telling you this and I'm telling you what I want to tell you. For all I, for all we know, half these people, you know, and other people that going to the sessions could be bullshitting their counselor. Yeah. Yep. Counselor doesn't know, but when you're under the influence of a psychedelic, um, Ain't no bullshit there, no. right? Yeah. There ain't no bullshit. And you're not, and it's not worth bullshitting yourself because she catches you and says, yeah. oh, you want to do this? And then takes you to a yeah, dark exactly. yeah. Oh, you get, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. So and then you're back. like so afraid. You're like, okay, okay, no, no, yeah. no, no, no. I'll own yeah. my and shit. When, I'll own my shit. And when yeah. you say yeah, bullshitting yeah, yeah. a counselor, I've done that before. When they're actually <laughs> like, so how many drinks on an average do you take per week? Is it one or two? And one, three to four? And I was like, yeah, it's not that bad. Mm-hmm. You know, yeah, it's okay. I'm thinking, man, I was like, I drink before I came here right now. <laughs> <laughs> Like oh, it's okay, you know, yeah. it's not that bad. And at, at the end of it, I was like, I walked. I was like, yeah, I probably got one bit of information, but I mm-hmm. bullshitted my way through the whole thing. Yeah, like, yeah. yeah. I don't yeah. want to keep paying for this. A good counselor, yeah. <laughs> a good counselor will be able to like um, figure out your read your bullshit, right? Like if you go with a poker face, a good counselor will be able to unlayer. But then I think at the same time, these poor counselors are sitting here listening to people's problems. Like, who's listening to their problems? I know. Like, how I do, have, do I have they so have much respect for them? I think they say that they get their own counseling with yeah. their own friends. Yeah. Someone yeah. has to go. They do. Because they have to unload too, right? They take yeah. on people. Like, and I feel like, I don't know about you guys, but for me, I feel like I'm an empath. So when I'm, I hear other yeah. people's problems, I take it on and then it sits in my mind yeah. after I leave. And I, I absorb I, it. I, yeah, yeah, and I try to see, okay, how can I help them? And it becomes almost like... A, a ingrained in my brain for like days after yeah. I'm like, okay, what can I do? And I've taken it on. And I'm like, it's draining me now. Mm-hmm. Yep. Um, and speaking of counselors, I actually had a counselor a couple years ago and I loved it. At first I was so against it. I remember, was, do you remember when I, I was, first encouraged you to go and I you're like, so counselors ignorant. for losers. I, I did yeah. say that. And I was so ignorant, guilty of saying that because I was ignorant. I thought yeah. like you need, need to, to be so yourself. broken to go. And I'm yeah. like, I don't need to fix myself. Until I started going there, I'm like, oh yeah, I need to do some work. <laughs> a Mary Jo needs to do some work. Um, but I think I remember asking my my counselor at the time, I said, well, what do you do to de-stress from hearing all of our problems? And he said the same thing. He said, I actually have other, well, when he said I do meditation, I do activities like hiking, nature, mm. uh, as a way to release everyone yep. else's problems. Um, and I thought that was kind of cool. But speaking of counselors, do you remember the counselor on Ted Lasso? She uh, whoops Ted Lasso's book. She was great. She was really, she was really good. good. She was yeah. not good for him. She was good for us, too. Yeah. yeah. Yes. We, we got yes. a dose of love. It was like free therapy for us, right? Totally. That whole yeah. show was therapy for yeah. me. I mean, I discovered Ted Lasso when I was in a really dark place in my life. And I just needed something. And it just, I'm so grateful when I watch the show. It was like, and I, I related to Ted because I was going through what he was going through. So I was able to connect with him on such a level. What a great show. Apple, kudos. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Kudos yeah. to Apple. Yeah. Did, it, did they win an Emmy? Or yeah, they won multiple Emmys. Yeah. Okay. Multiple and you know, yeah. um, season three is coming up know, in the spring, but I think yeah. they're saying that might be the yeah, final season. Yeah, as soon season. as the, uh, season two is over, I went online right away. It was like, when is season three coming out? And then they announced that they're only renewing it for one more season. Yeah. It's over. And I was like so disappointed because... Yeah. 
I felt like I got so much from that show. Yeah. It was one of those shows where everybody needs to watch and you learn so much yes. right? and it helps you like look at grow. your own life and help you grow as well. Yeah. Yeah. Because I, I learned so much from Ted Lasso, just how his perspective was, how yes. he always saw the glass half full. That's always, what I loved about yeah, him. Yeah, his perspective yeah. on everything. Someone comes to him with their palm and he would always turn it around yeah. and make you think and look at that differently. And it was such a like growth mindset show that I was so shocked that it only was re- renewed for one season when mm-hmm. I felt like they could have got another two, three seasons easy out of that. Yeah. But what I thought was for me was so amazing was when, you know, Rebecca, which is, you know, the one who owns the soccer, play, all the things that she did to ensure he fails. And then mm-hmm. when she comes clean and how he handled it, like yeah. that shows you the depth character, of a person's yeah. character, right. right? Like he was able to see what pain does to a person and the, the ability to forgive, like that was so powerful for me to be like, this is what we need more of is to recognize that when people are doing not such hurtful good things, things, hurtful things, it's usually because they're in pain. Mm-hmm. And instead of saying, I'm hurting, I'm mm-hmm. in pain, they they're, attack. They're projecting it. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Like yeah. those things, there's so many moments in that show that I took away with like, you know, when Jamie Tart, when he was asking like, how do I get through to him? You know, mm-hmm. he likes positive reinforcement. And I was like, I like positive reinforcement. Mm-hmm. I don't like that uh, when I'm at work, if someone tries to peg me against another yeah. coworker mm-hmm. or tries or to make me out, no, down. cut you down. Mm-hmm. It doesn't work for me. I just get disconnected and I don't mm-hmm. perform. Yeah. Me. I perform really well when you remind me of how great I did here and how I can do better. Yes. Like yeah. you just exactly. keep encouraging well, human me. Nature, yeah. If you tell anyone something positive about themselves, they're going to work harder. Right. Mm-hmm. I hope so. I just don't know if that's for everybody. Cause I know that there are, I have some friends who have said, no, I like negative reinforcement. What? I have a friend who Says he likes negative reinforcement. Some people use yeah. that though, right? Okay. They use that fuel to their fire. It's like That's what he said. when they say, like, we have ha- like haters or people are hating on you. Yeah. It's like you use it to bring you down or use it to fuel your fire and turn it yeah. into something. Yeah, there's a lot of themes in um, in Ted Lasso that I know that they're kind of like challenging the status quo. But there's one thing that I noticed that kind of runs deep in all of them is like there's some daddy issues with all the characters. <laughs> yeah. Wait, Rebecca has daddy yep. issues with her dad. Ted had some dad. unfinished oh, business dad with his dad. Yep. Roy Kent has some issues with yeah. dad. Jamie, Jamie Tart, Kent has yep. some issues. Yep. Jamie Todd, raise yep. his name. Mm-hmm. Uh, Nate has some issues with his dad. Parents. Yeah, his dad, dad. Great. Because remember when they there went to that a, restaurant? There's a theme there. Look at that answer. Remember, some layer they that. went to the restaurant and he wanted his dad's mm-hmm. approval. Mm-hmm. Right? Well, aren't we oh, always yeah. looking for our parents' yeah. approval? And I'm just trying to think, is there anyone else that has dad? I'm still looking for mom and dad's approval. I'm confident that I've let mom down on so many levels. All subconsciously <laughs> using, looking for the yeah approval. yeah. Well, what themes did you guys notice, Andy? Because that's what stuck out for me. I'm like, wait a minute. I never Everyone, even noticed that theme. Everyone yeah. disconnected. I didn't notice that. I knew that they all had childhood yeah. issues that were surfacing as, as adults. That that yeah. theme I saw, but I never really realized how much of it was dad. You're right about yeah. that. Yeah. I, yeah. I just found that I was going back and watching episodes over and over again, and learning more and more from yeah. each episode. Yeah. Yeah. It, was like, it was just a, a great, well-made show. I think Jason's, I don't know how to pronounce his last, Sudeikis, Sudeikis, Sudeikis. Yeah. Sudeikis. Yeah. he's one of the like, writers, producers. Yeah. He plays a big role in that show, and yep. it, mm-hmm. it was so well-made that I'm hoping there's a spin-off or something, something. from that show, because yeah. it wasn't give, enough. I at least give more. us two more seasons. They yeah. gotta give I us, wanted like, more there's just so much they pack in it. I just want yep. more of that type of character, yep. so hopefully if there's mm-hmm. a spin-off, that yeah. would be well, great. You know, it's good for everybody. That kind of show is what we need more of nowadays, not like the crime shows and the stuff that are basically of negative reinforcement. We Agreed. don't need any like, of that. Your mind watch, is a sponge. So you don't want to watch Ted Bundy and Jeffrey Dahmer. Yeah, or series? Like another forty-eight. Or <laughs> I something never like watched Jeffrey Dahmer for that reason. So I was like, yeah. I don't need no, any of this darkness in my it. mind. Nope. I used to watch oh. the channel A and E a lot before because there used to be a lot of good programs on there. And the last few years, I literally stopped because I find. If you look at it during the daytime, all day, every day, there's they have a show called 48 Hours, which is the when a, a murder happens or a crime happens, mostly murders, they say that the first 48 hours are the most critical time to solve uh, that crime. Oh, if yeah. they can't be solved in that time, like they say 75% of the time it doesn't get solved. That show is on all day, every day on that channel. And if it's not that show, it's some sort of other crime mm-hmm. d- drama, but that's a real show. So that goes to show like, look what they're kind of putting out the mm-hmm. message. They're doing so much negative reinforcement and, mm-hmm. and keeping people afraid because whoever's watching that channel is watching how many different ways every hour someone has been murdered. Oh, that's huge. Yeah, yeah. yeah that's no. crazy. And no. there must be enough ratings for them to keep pushing that out there that yeah. that's what yeah. people are watching. Well, you know that's the, kind of sad. 
Well, you know, the power of social media, like we can get so many people together and and get listeners and viewers and everybody like Mm -hmm. after if they don't renew it, like, and if it's a great show, if it's making a positive impact. To get them to maybe get them to renew it for another season. We go to Hollywood to uh, uh, put up our signs and protest free (laughs) Willie. We'll reverse it and say free Ted Lasso. No, 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 Ted Lasso. I agree. To add to Al's point, 40 hours was like, I remember. Do you remember Mob Wise? It was a reality show. Yeah, yeah. Mob Wise is that big where Big Ange was on yes. the show. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, Rest in peace, Big Ange. People should call me a Little Ange because well, my name is Ange. Yeah. She yeah. did. Yeah. Yeah. So I remember watching um, Mob Wives, and I used to love Drita because she was like this just feisty mm. powerhouse kind of woman who would like beat the shit out of people. I love Drita too. And like I remember coming into work, and my coworkers like. What's going on with you? He's like, you're so fine. I'm like, oh. I never thought it was like, are you still watching that Mob Wives? You stop watching it. You're like, you're getting really like feisty. And I went, like, that's when I realized how much of your mental diet, mm-hmm. like you take this and you absorb it in. Mm-hmm. And then you, at some point, like. You want to be like that's the character. Yeah, and you take that, that character and you start becoming yeah. like, I'm not that kind of a person. Like, mm-hmm. yeah, but I was really projecting that. So mm-hmm. that's where I, that was the first time I became self-aware of like what I'm watching will impact mm-hmm. me. And I started yeah. being a little bit more mindful of, what I would watch. Yeah. Well, Elle, let's talk about how you kind of wrote off Ted Lasso. Yeah. I actually have a friend. Rose introduced it to yeah, three really. of us. And yep. I know a friend of mine yeah. was like, this show is lame. The, the first episode was well, first episode weird. Was- I didn't get it. I remember Rose saying, watch, make sure you watch the second episode. Cause I said, I was like, oh, this show sucks. I don't want to watch it. And she said, no, watch the second episode. So then I was like, oh crap, fine. And then one day, I guess there was nothing to watch. I was like, okay, I'm going to watch the second episode. I watched it. And I was like, Oh snap! This show is so good. And then I just went and <laughs> binge and watched like four or five episodes. And then right away I started forwarding that show to everybody else. I said, "Make sure you watch the second episode." I was like, mm-hmm. hey, "You'll you'll get turned off by the first one." Mm-hmm. Every single person I sent that to said, "Yeah." If I didn't watch the second episode, I never would watch that show. Again. Yeah. Do you know what I feel like? I feel like I did a service. Like I yeah. did a good service to let people, mm-hmm. hey, here's a really great positive show. I know a lot of people don't like reading positive books or or knowing about positivity. I think we're just naturally programmed to be negative so it was a way of me being like if i can just get more people to view this and maybe change yeah. their thinking they'll forward it to the next set of people and we can maybe have more of a positive mm-hmm. environment well, that's, that's like most shows right when when the pilot because that was a pilot episode or pilot season that came out yeah. and it's like any show that you watch it's like even with sopranos which is one of the greatest shows but the first few episodes it's like character development yeah. right they're figuring out the plot you're figuring things out so you don't really know what the message or the theme is until like three or four episodes right. Right. In, right. That's, yeah. re- that's I, really I think what it's it is. because we're all unfortunately uh, with our technology and our society, we always want things right away. Yeah. We want uh, things to be boom, 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 I boom, boom. See, yep. make me laugh, make me cry, do whatever you want right yeah. away in the matter of <laughs> 20 minutes. And if you don't capture my attention, we write that show off. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Who's your, who's your favorite character? Ted. <laughs> Ted's my favorite um, character, mm-hmm. but um, Roy is my dream Oh, man. I love Roy. 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 What does he do? What do you, what Roy do you see? Kent like, is my dream man. He, when he sees people, yeah, he's like, yeah, yeah, I, love I love Roy. I love Roy. He's, yeah. so, he's handsome yeah. too. Yeah, very handsome. I didn't like how Nate in the second season. I know. Oh, that that's that's broke my I know. Heart. I know. Yeah. Yeah. They left it. To an a-hole. That's where they left season two. Yeah, that was so heartbreaking when he sold out Ted. I was like, no, don't Because he's the one who gave the opportunity, acknowledged it. Remember when he asked me, he's like, oh, no one even But do you see how he's watching himself on Twitter when he did those things? Do you see how the ego kicking in? Yeah, exactly. Yep. That's yeah. where the jealousy, the envy of Ted's coming yeah. in, right? Yeah, let me, I know. if I take him down, then I can take his spot, not knowing there's room for everybody on the playing field. Mm-hmm. And I also like the characters because they, uh, Nate is uh, of Indian background. So yep. that, and I like, you know, the characters, like they put certain characters like Rebecca in a powerful position. Usually it's a male that's in a powerful Ooh. position like that. But the only thing that I didn't like when Nate started turning, I was like, no, man, don't do that. It's like yeah. a typical Indian turning <laughs> when something good is happening. <laughs> don't do that. Yeah. But I think that he's going to turn it around. I, I hope know. they turn we it around. We all felt that because yeah. we're Indian. We're like, yeah. what are you doing to my people? Yeah. I took it personally. Yeah. I was like, do you know what I loved was when um, Rebecca offered, I forgot her name, I think, um, in the bathroom. Remember, she's like, you know, why don't you do this, do my, do the job? I offer her a job. She's like, are you just offering me a job um, because I helped you in the bathroom and she's like yeah that's what men do all the time mm-hmm. and I was like that's so true right men give them other buddies jobs that mm-hmm. are maybe not qualified but it's like yep I'm I'm the you know CFO at this company why don't you come work as my director so what, why can't women do the same thing help men each other men are great out? at networking very good at networking women, we can, are, women can learn a thing or women two women are that. always busy cutting each other down I think it's just too catty that's a problem yeah, I'm working, I remember I've worked with a lot of women and they're all like, like the more majority women there's always like 
a lot of drama that goes. No, yeah. it needs to it's stop. Like, yeah, it's yeah. always too much cattiness, and it's mm-hmm. like uh, yeah. this doesn't. No, it needs to stop. We out. need to have a sisterhood. End yeah. of the day, women need to support women. Like Agreed. I'm a big advocate. One hundred, and I'm going to do a whole episode on that. And I'll bring stats for you, Angie, and how important that is that mm-hmm. we. Uh, uh, women start sticking together and supporting one another. Yeah, we're going to rally in, around yeah. each other. Life is already hard. Yeah. Why are you turning on one it, of your sisters? It, it, speaking yeah. of that, then you like the show Working Moms because it shows like the, the, the mostly the women, they have each other's back. And oh, really? See, yeah, good. They hold down. They, Finally, a nice positive yeah, now that I think show. About it, I was like, well, that's one of the themes of the show. <laughs> 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 I just thought it was funny. <laughs> No, that's no, what I, I, I love when women are like kumbaya together, supporting each other and elevating each other, motivating. Like that's what life is about. Well, that's what that theme was in Ted Lasso too. It was beautiful that they showed the two women that got along so well, built each other up and helped each other mm-hmm. grow. Yeah. Like that was another uh, theme that was mm-hmm. in the show, which I love because mm-hmm. That's necessary for us to see yeah. that women. You see that help each other yeah. in situations. If you're yeah. if you're in a if you're in a position of power, help. And I always say this thing with if you're an older woman, help the younger women. Help mm-hmm. those those are you're your like baby sisters. Model. Yeah, mm-hmm. like help them grow and help them maybe not make the same mistakes. That's yeah. usually what I try mm-hmm. to do. Is like I hope you don't don't go down the same path I did. Or here's some things that I can tell you yeah. that I did that didn't work. Yeah, mm-hmm. that's why I like uh, Rebecca. Who's uh, Jamie? Oh, it is, well, Jamie, Jamie's girlfriend. Yeah, girlfriend became name. Roy Kent's girlfriend. Right? Yeah, yeah. And she's so sweet. I love her character. But did you see how Rebecca and her like they formed a sister? Yeah, that's what I mean. They're helping yeah. each other. That's what it's about. And she's so honest. And when Rebecca was feeling insecure about something, and then she, she came went, and helped her with the positioning. Yeah, brilliant. That's I love it. I remember some of that. It's been a while. That's a problem. They did it almost a year ago. The season yeah. was over. That. I've forgotten almost. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But oh, I didn't remember God. the general gist of the show. Right. <laughs> I it was that really powerful like, that it's gone. Yeah, it was yeah. that powerful. And again, yeah. like I was yeah. saying, I was not in a good headspace Whenever, when I but yeah, even me now, a lot. Hey, do you know of any shows to recommend? First, I'm like, have you ever seen Ted Lasso? Yeah, that's my <laughs> show. Nine, ten, ten, like, oh, yeah, I love yeah. that show. That's yeah. a great that show. That is definitely yeah. my go to. That's probably one of the only. I would say really great shows that I've watched in the last yeah. five years. I would recommend, yeah, 100%. especially a positive show that you'd want someone to be like, yeah. you need this in your life. And yeah. this is almost a go-to show where if you're down and you're not feeling good. Go watch that show and yeah. it'll bring you. Back and I up. think that that's such a great show because they're actually addressing like male insecurities, like. They're yeah. talking about stuff and feelings. Like when he had that panic attack, remember? It, I uh, totally ten- was able to relate to that. Yeah, 100%. we've all had yeah. some some sort of like where you're like, yeah. <gasps> like, I can't breathe. What's yep. happening? And it happens to all of us. But the thing is, men are programmed or told to be tough guys. Mm-hmm. Don't talk about your problems, right? Yeah. Did anything from that, um, Al, resonate with you or yeah, anything? Uh, first time I ever experienced a panic, t- panic attack was about a year and a half ago. And yeah, that was one of the scariest things ever. I thought I was having a heart attack first. And I was like, something's going on. But yeah, like they're saying, guys are programmed to like not talk about it. Don't just suck it up and be mad and deal with it. Bury it. Yeah. Yeah. Which is the worst thing. That's what I was saying. Like the body keeps score. Those emotions yeah. get tied up somewhere inside you. So mm-hmm. uh, it's so important. So important. Both yeah. genders equally. Like find mm-hmm. someone to communicate with exactly. and that express yourself. Yeah, that like was, Madonna said, express yourself. Yeah. Don't suppress yourself. Yeah. She was right. That was one of the main precursors that kind of sort of pushed me in the direction of you need to go do ayahuasca. You've tried. Mm-hmm. You've tried the therapy you tried the medicine you tried your own medicine that's in a bottle that doesn't work (laughs) you tried your medicine wrapped up in a paper and smoked and that didn't work and then you tried all the other ways and you're like okay something's pushing me this direction because Mm. that's uh it's not gonna work we brought out the big guns we brought out the big guns we're like all right enough enough of this playing around heavy lifting yep it's something the universe is telling me you gotta go inwards now yeah and that's exactly what i was saying I, i was going external for everything my whole yeah, putting stuff yep. in, putting yep. go see a therapist, ingest now, the medicine, go with your friends, do this, yeah. go have a drink, go, go to the bar, go party go, it out yep. and get it out of your yep. system. And none of that will go fill the void yep. that only you can fill yourself. Well, that's what we do, right? We go through life numbing things. Yeah. We're numbing. Yep. And that's why a lot of us are not awake because we, I don't know if we don't want to be awake, but we just keep suppressing our feelings and emotions about situations and things and just keep numbing, numbing and going through. And I'm going to tell you at some point that stuff starts to manifest and comes to the surface. Mm-hmm. And when you're not ready, guess what? Boom. Mm-hmm. It's going to make you ready. And it's usually when you least expect it, you're just yeah. boom, it gets mm-hmm. you. Yep. Yeah. And it just shatters your world mm-hmm. and it brings you, breaks you down and you're like, okay, I've got two things. Either I just keep going down this dark, dark spiral or I somehow start having faith in God. And for me, that was really what uh, brought me back to like surface was like having faith in God. And like, I would talk to Baba all the time, like, give me strength, guide me, mm-hmm. give me courage. Mm-hmm. And and it's not overnight. So I don't want people to think like, this is going to 
be an overnight thing. It's constant work. I'm still mm-hmm. working on myself. Yeah. Like I'm still trying to figure help myself. You, like, yeah. Kickstart and get you on the right path. Yeah. Now it's up to you what path you're going to follow. Yeah. Like if you want to continue uh, letting your addictions control you after that, yeah. you can go straight to the liquor store and pick up that bottle and then sit there and say, why am I like this? Or why am I sad? Yeah. You, you were shown something and you were shown what path you need to go down to, but it's work. Like every successful person that's ever made it anywhere, which is successful spiritually, financially, whichever way you want to consider um, successful. I like to consider it that you wake up the next day, a sense of happiness and wanting to enjoy the day and you want to take on the day and say, okay, I'm ready for this. But I think it's up to you to put that work in. You don't Mm -hmm. want to put the work in and you can sit there and sulk in your sorrows and wonder why I'm in this position. But as you get older, life and universe will send you these signs and it's up to you if you want to and like tying it back to Ted Lasso like you see that he's constantly trying to go out there and like fix people help them wasn't doing the work on himself and that's where his panic attack hit him was like you gotta stop and take care of yourself because you're Mm -hmm. you're basically pouring out of an empty cup and it just all manifested for him him and his own wife too they were going through the so he started seeing it come back to him he's processing a divorce or he didn't and he ran away maybe from the divorce yeah That's why he took that job in England as a soccer exactly. coach. He was running away from something, yeah. right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yep. And I always like to say hardships build character. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Before we close, you want to make some predictions on how season three of Ted Lasso is going to play out. Ooh. Let's make some predictions. I feel Nate will be humbled. He will be Life will humble humbled. Nate. Life exactly. will humble will Nate. Forced to be humble. Forced to be humble. Mm-hmm. Yeah. His ego will go a yeah. thing higher. I think his ego is going to go a little bit more yeah. higher and then something uh, traumatic will happen that will have yes. to bring him back. Maybe a loss of a parent or mm-hmm. something major that will have to bring him back down to earth. Life always finds a way to humble your ass. <laughs> it so does. He, if you ain't ready, so does. If you ain't ready, you're going to eat a humble pie one of yes. these days. Mm-hmm. I've eaten right. a humble it's pie. it's going to taste like shit. <laughs> yep. Yes. Yep. I've yeah. eaten my humble yeah. pie. I agree. Yep. All right. Well, I think I think that's great. I'm really looking forward to season three of Ted Lasso. Yeah. Uh, I hope uh, I hope everyone else out there that's listening to us is that that hasn't watched Ted Lasso. Please uh, check it out. It's a great show. We are pumped about season three, mm-hmm. and we can't wait for it to come out sometime spring in 2023. We're probably gonna do a little like Ted Lasso viewing party or something. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah We're I definitely think so. Having a- so until then, let's uh, call it. Uh, Call it a wrap. Let's call it a wrap. Let's, Let's call it a wrap. Just All want right. to say thank you so much for tuning into our channel. I hope you got some tidbits and some nuggets of Ted Lasso information from us that you found useful. Please tune in next week when we're going to be back again. Please subscribe, share, like. We're also on other social platforms like TikTok, Instagram, Facebook. Anything else that I'm missing? And the YouTube. YouTube. Oh, the YouTube. The YouTube. YouTube. That's right. This is where you can find these episodes and they're also on Spotify all the other platforms. All the major podcast platforms. Yes, exactly. Until then, please take care and uh, thanks so much. Bye. Thank you. See you.